Well, hello and welcome back to my channel. So in this video, we're going to explore AI and specifically ChatGPT to see if it can be used to solve and maybe even design electrical circuits. So let's make a start. Here I have the chat GPT window loaded up and let's just ask it if it can solve simple electrical circuits. It's pretty good because as you can see, I didn't even spell simple correctly and it still managed to know what I was talking about. So that's a good start. Let's give it a simple electrical circuit and see what happens. So I've told it that I've got a 10 volt source and I've got two series resistors that form a potential divider. It's giving me some explanation now. So these formulas, they could be used to solve any potential divider circuit. But in a moment, I'm going to give it some values to actually see if it spits out the right answer. So we have our 10 volt source. And now I'm going to say one of the resistors is 7K and the other resistor is 3K. Now I'll ask it to find the voltage across the 3K resistor. Excellent, so it's got the right results. So let's just think about what it what that circuit looks like. So we have a 10 volt source, two connected resistors, two series connected resistors. So if we add those resistors together, we get 10K of resistance. 10 volts divided by 10k, which is Ohm's law, gives us a current flow of 1 milliamp. That 1 milliamp flows through all the um, components in the circuit. So we have 1 milliamp flowing through the 3k resistor, the M and the K cancel, and we get 3 volts. So of course here, chat, B, chat GPT is correct. Great. Let's try again now with a slightly more complicated circuit that needs a slightly um, more advanced approach. So I'm going to ask it a loop analysis question. So we've got a loop containing four components. We've got three resistors, but we don't know their value. We don't know what resistance they are. So here I've said that there's a DC voltage source, 10 volts. There's a three resistors in this circuit, but we don't know their values. But we do know that there's three volts across one of the resistors and there's six volts across the other resistor. So that means there's a third resistor where we don't know the voltage. So to solve this, we need to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law, which states all the voltages around the loop must add up to zero. So basically, if we've got a, 10, a plus 10 volt source and we know six plus three volts are dropped across two of the resistors, there must be one volt dropped across the, the remaining resistor. But does ChatGPT know that? Let's see. It's a good start. It says it's Kirchhoff's voltage law. Perfect. Pretty impressive that it managed to do that because that's not simply just plugging in values into an equation. It actually had to decide what technique to use was the best technique to use there. And it correctly gave us a really good answer. So that's impressive. Let's see now if ChatGPT can actually produce as a circuit that we can maybe simulate an LT spice and modify for ourselves because that would be incredibly powerful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to just make up some values for these resistors and then I'm going to ask ChatGBT to actually create a, a spice netlist for us to simulate. So let's do that now.
So I've told it what the values of the resistors are, and I'm asking it to plot the voltage across the 1K resistor. So here it's actually creating the netlist for that circuit. That's basically a, a set of instructions that describe what that circuit looks like. Excellent. So let's copy that. And let's move over into LT Spice to see if it actually works. So here I am in LT Spice. I'm going to make a new um, schematic and I'm going to add that code ChatGPT generated as a Spice directive. So I've copied it in there and there's my Spice directive. Okay, that's the actual net list. We can see basically how it works. There's various nodes in this circuit. There's got a, a 10 volt DC source. Here's our six free and one K resistor. It's going to do a transient analysis and it's gonna plot the voltage at node three. So let's run that now. What I don't like is that there's no trace. It should be plotting the voltage at node three. So let's see if we can add a trace and let's see if it's actually worked. Okay, so I've asked it to plot the voltage at node three and it's correctly plotting one volt. But to be honest, a spice net list is, is good, but it's not very intuitive. So it, it's very difficult to picture what the circuit may look like just from this text. So what we can actually do is we can use a schematic builder where we, we copy this net, net list created by ChatGPT into the schematic builder and it actually creates those symbols and components for us. So let's have a look at that next. So here's the schematic builder that you can download free for LT Spice. So it's a really simple program to use. You simply put your net list, and this is the, the default one, into here, so copy and paste. So I'm gonna copy my net list in here and all I need to do is click build. Let's just say a block and schematic. Let's save that schematic. So let's see if that actually works. Let's go into LT Spice, open our file. And we can see we've got the components, but they're not joined together. Well, that's a really easy fix because helpfully the nodes are labeled. So we can see here, the voltage source is labeled node one, and this resistor is labeled node one. We simply need to connect those two points together and the same for all the other nodes and we'll get our schematic. So here we've actually used chat GPT to actually design our circuit for us. And although it hasn't given us a schematic directly, it's giving us a net list that we can use to make a schematic. So let's run this simulation now. We can see it's run for 10 milliseconds. It hasn't quite plotted the, um, the voltage at node three correctly, um, probably because this command doesn't look right to me, but let's just click here and we can see we've got one volt there. Let's check the voltage across this free K resistor. So if I click here, I'm gonna measure four volts now because basically that's the voltage across these two resistors with respect to ground. But if I go to um, view set probe reference and I put my reference here and I click my voltage there, we should measure three volts. So there's three volts across that resistor, which is exactly what we expect. Um, and that's it, it's worked really well. So for my final example, I'm gonna actually ask it to design something. I'm going to ask it to design a low pass filter. So we haven't covered AC circuits yet, but it's a really classic thing you might have to do is design a, a low pass passive filter using a resistor and a capacitor, for example. So let's do that. So I've asked it to design a low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of one megahertz. I'm really curious if it's actually going to give us some component values. It's giving us the correct formula, but will it give us some components? 
So it's given us a spice net list, but that doesn't look quite right to me. I don't see where it's mentioned an AC source or anything like that. So I'm going to skip the using the net list. I'm just going to draw the components. There's only three components. It's probably quicker to draw it yourself in LT Spice. So here I am in LT Spice. Let's draw that circuit. So I'm going to start with a voltage source. And I'm going to set that as a voltage source, an AC voltage source with an amplitude of one volt. I'm then going to connect it to my RC network or my RC filter. And this is a low pass filter. So the resistor and capacitor need arranging in a specific way. So our output would be from here and here between the capacitor. And obviously at low frequencies, this is a very high impedance. So all the volts are dropped across it. So basically whatever our input is, we get across our output. But at very high frequencies, this is a very low impedance. So all the volts are dropped across the resistor and the output's very low. So that's the behavior of a low pass filter. Let's put our ground terminal. Let's set our resistor values now. So that chat GPT said that was a 10K resistor. And I believe that was a 150 picofarad capacitor. So if we run that now and we'll set a transient analysis between 1 hertz and 100 megahertz, let's see what we get. So when we run that analysis, what we see is not what we'd expect for a low pass filter with a cutoff frequency at 1 megahertz. So at 1 megahertz, the, the minus 3 dB point um, should the cutoff is is the minus 3 dB point. So you'd expect that this basically this plot to be shifted right, um, what, you know, 900 kilohertz up, up to this point here. Um, basically, what I think has happened is that value looks way too high. If I just change that and run again, that looks like a much more convincing um, filter with a cutoff frequency of um, 1 megahertz. And we can actually see that the minus 3 dB points is around 1.09, 1.08 megahertz. So it actually didn't correct calculate the correct values, which is just very odd that it, it got it wrong. It got the right formula essentially, but the values are wrong. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. It basically gave you the right circuit and it was in the right ballpark, but it just didn't give you the correct values. Let's just check those calculations provided by ChatGPT. We can see just using this online calculator for a, a CR low pass filter, if I put 10K and 150 picofarads into this calculator, calculate, it tells me the cutoff frequency of this, which is 106 kilohertz, not the, the one megahertz we asked for. So clearly there is a problem. So let's wrap up with a brief summary and just answer the question, can ChatGPT really help solve and maybe even design electrical circuits? I think the answer to that is possibly yes, with some caveats. So first, let's have a look at the good points. Well, you know, it provides useful insight into how it solves the circuit problems, which I found was really good. It didn't just spit out an answer out of nowhere. It actually gave you how, the, the workings that it went through to actually calculate that answer, which I found really useful. It also seems to take the correct approach. So you can write a relatively long prompt, um, with quite wordy, about a particular circuit, and it seems to be able to analyze what you've said and, and pick out the, the best approach to maybe solve that circuit, which is also really impressive. And finally, you know, it's actually able to produce a spice net list that you can then load into say LT spice and maybe modify or create a schematic from, etc. So that was really useful. Now onto some of the bad points. Well, what I found the worst thing about it was is that it's confidently incorrect. So when I was looking at the filter, it just gave me some values and, and they looked right. But when I actually tested that circuit, 
they didn't work they were completely wrong so the approach it said was right but the answer was wrong which is a big problem so that you know imagine if you you use it to design a circuit and then you just build it without even testing in safe spice and there's a big problem with it so that's an issue also because it's limited to text input it's okay for describing very simple circuits like a potential divider etc but if you try and describe a more complicated circuit for example a, a nodal analysis question with several nodes etc then it, it's really difficult to get the prompt correct so that it gives you the correct answer so it's probably not a problem with the chat gpt itself it's it's our ability to be able to describe a complex circuit in words it, it's difficult to do so that's an issue that would be really easy to fix if you could upload a photograph of the circuit that'd be awesome so really what do you think let me know in the comments i'm interested to see if anyone else has tried it do you think you'll be able to design complicated circuits in the future i'm not so sure so if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and thanks for watching